Great. Okay. So uh, what kind of scenario we are going to implement today? The scenario which we are implementing is nothing but DB to JSON scenario. So your source system is giving data in the database, MySQL database, and your destination system want that data in JSON. Okay, so yesterday we set the context uh, like this. For example, uh, your recruitment app, which is putting the data, maybe employee data into MySQL database table, employee table, and your Mule app supposed to read that and convert that into JSON format. And that JSON file has to be written in G colon data output. Okay, so this is DB to JSON scenario. So source system will give you the data in the database and destination system want that data in the JSON file. That is what the scenario. So we already have the data in the database. So we can assume that recruitment app already put the data in database. So for example, I'll show you that I do have employee table. So let's say MySQL query browser. And let me show you, let me connect to my MySQL database. I put the password and I'll connect to this default schema. That is fine. So, okay. And what I can have, let's say I focus on this employee record. So let me see which all records are there in the employee table. Okay, so I can see that there are various employee records are there. Uh, safer side, I don't have null value for the salary. So let me have some value for salary here and I'll save that. Okay, so all the records have employee ID, ename and salary. We want to fetch these records. We want to read these records in MuleSoft and generate a JSON file out of that. Okay, so which all processors, which all connectors we will be required to use? Let us see that. So we are implementing DB to JSON scenario. And which all connector? So as per the connector is concerned, we will be using typically our HTTP listener which will be trigger point to initiate your flow. It will not be uh, any other connector. So it's a normal HTTP listener connector, which will trigger the execution of flow. So we are going to use it to trigger the execution of flow normal way, the way we uh, take it in other flows in other scenarios. Another one is select from database module so the way we have used core module we have used file module same way we do have database module in that database module we do have select processor okay i'll show you that just to show you the mule palette i open some a normal project, maybe this project I open. Okay, so have a look on that. So ignore this project just for the sake of opening any project. I open that. So here you can see that I do have database project, database module, right? In that database module, I do have different processors out of that select select uh, processor is there which will actually pick up the data from the database now for that we need to write the select query so we will talk about that writing queries and all uh, separate separately but i have to configure the select query inside that uh, just I'm putting the select query because here I already fired that query, you know here Okay, same way I can write that query in 
select processor so the query which i have to use is nothing but select star from employee same query so we will not get deeper into writing queries and all but here we will use the simple query which we used to have here select star from employee which will fetch all the records so from mulesoft from any point studio whenever we will have this select processor i need to have this query to be configured over there that's select so this will fetch this select what select will do select will fetch all records from employee table and generate it will not generate json directly so there is a fixed way in which it is implemented so what it generate it generate iterator java object okay it generate it is one kind of java object one kind of java instance which is already there iterator class is already declared in java library so iterator java object will be generated by this select which is not our uh, requirement right we have to generate json so this iterator java object has to be converted into json so we will require one transform message processor transform message component you can say will convert the iterator object to json file for that what we require json format not file file we have to generate separately so for that what we require we require sample json file so json is a format actually that is nothing but java script object notation it is one kind of format you can consider we will see how that format look like so sample json file will be required that using that file i will be converting the incoming database iterator object to json format that's how it will be and finally what i will have write processor from file module which will write the payload which is nothing but json format to actual file so finally we will generate the actual file which is emp.json maybe right that will be generated here so that is our rough implementation way that we have to follow to implement so what all we will need we will take a flow and we will need HTTP listener which will just trigger the execution of our flow because my database connector cannot be in source okay then I will have select processor from the database then I will take transform message in that transform message there is something called as input schema and output schema as well So we will learn there itself what do you mean by input schema and what do you mean by output schema okay and i will have write processor file from which uh, with which i can uh, write generate the file actually that's a write write file processor so that's how i'm going to implement this db2 json scenario uh, in select we will require database connector also db connector where the server details my sql server details are stored in that for example localhost port username password everything that details will be in db connector config so we'll see that how to create the db con connector config so let's do one thing let us jump into the implementation now so let me come to my anypoint studio and let me start let me close this project it's always good idea to close all the projects before we create new project let me create the new project i'll call it as db to json 
db to json that's what is the scenario and okay so fine let me say finish And first thing, what I will do, I'll take my flow. So I'm dragging the flow, taking it here. Then I take STDP listener. Okay. So right now, I take STDP listener. And as I told you, I will require select from database to actually fetch the content from the database. So let us take that select. Or what I can do, I can add the database module here first. So I say add module and I add database so that all the processor in the database module will be visible and from that this is one way or you can directly just type once you are habitual with that you can directly type select and this select you can drag and drop so let me take this select and let me put it here uh, whatever the output of select let me see what it prints on the screen so maybe before i get into generation of json I'll print it on the screen. This is one part I will complete first. It fetch the data and print it on the screen. So whenever it will print, this iterator object will be printed, you know. So it will not be printing the data actually. We'll see that what it prints. It's a Java object. It's not the text content or some content, you know. It is a Java object. So how it is getting printed, we will understand that. So let us get into the listener configuration first. Now, typical configuration we do have connector configuration, which is localhost and 9001. So, that one. So, let me take localhost and the port number is 9001. Okay. Let me see if this port is already in use. I will do test connection. This is just HTTP listener. I'm not connecting to database yet. To check that whether this port is already in use or I can use it, it's free. It's taking some time. Okay, so test connection successful. That means I can use this, say okay. And for path, I'm using forward slash. Perfect. So that's how listener is configured. Then let me configure this select component, select processor. So let's see. As I told you, connector, just like in HTTP listener, there is a connector which contains local host and the port number. Same way, in select, there is a connector. So let me see how to configure that connector. As of now, there is no connector created. You can see that in global elements. So we can see only one connector configuration is there. So let me create the database connector. So click on plus. Let's see what all I need to configure. So here you can see connection. So I need to take my sql connection so i want to create a my sql database connection so i selected my sql connection and here once you have my sql connection it says required libraries so we know that whenever mulesoft talk to database it requires driver in between and we already downloaded that driver so let me show you that in my mule4 directory so in my case it is mule4 mule4 directory uh, i do have 
this mysql connector java dot jar so this is what the jdbc driver file is there so what i need to do i need to uh, select that jdbc driver over here so i say configure and i will say local file so in case you if your local file doesn't work then add recommended libraries can download that file from internet okay or it will take care of adding that recommended library maven dependency as of now we are not interested so i do have the file available to me locally so i'll pick it up from local and let me select it it is inside c colon uh, it is in g colon for and this is the file so let me browse that and let me add it let's see yeah green uh, tick mark is there that means file got accepted so this is how i need to configure the jdbc driver database driver then give the host name where your mysql database is running so it is running on the local machine so i give local host port number it is running on 3306 port number which is the standard port for mysql server so 3306 user it's by default root and the password uh, if you remember while installing mysql db we have given password as admin so that is what i have given database so the database instance so i want to connect to mule database instance so here i will be connecting to mule database instance and employee is a table from that that's what i will do that's great let's see whether it connects to database or not cool so it connects to database successfully very good in case if it doesn't connect then you can check in the services whether your mysql database service is running or not for example we used to check it in services whether my mysql service is running or not in case if there is some problem in the test connection I'm getting open yes service has got open and this is what and you can check that you can see my sql uh, service is running well so in case if it is stopped for you and test connection is failed you can uh, start it you can double click on it and you can start it okay that will be there in case if your test connection gets failed that's great say okay and now we will put the query i told you that what query we are going to use I'm going to use select star from employee, which is the same query which I fire here to fetch the records. I don't to have this alias basically. This is called as alias, so I don't require it really. So I have this query and I take that query in SQL query text. So I just put it. That's great. As of now, I'll not get into input parameters. My query simply will fetch the all records right no error and whatever is the outcome whatever is the outcome of select let me show you here you can see the outcome of select is array of objects and it will have emp id ename and salary you can check out in the design time okay so if you look at select select will have select will fetch emp id ename salary and data type is also taken as per the table we created in uh, database according to that database uh, data type already picked up and this is what the output array of objects and that array of objects we are just printing it on console and it is sent to the uh, postman also okay we are we are sending it to the postman as well whatever is the outcome so let's see what happens with this so i'm going to execute it for a while run it uh, 
let me close this services. So this is just a half project which will generate, which will fetch the records and that records will be printed on the screen. So let me fetch that records, see what happens. So I'm going to hit that from the postman and then it will fetch the record using the select and whatever is the outcome of select will be printed on the logger and same will be sent back to the postman. So let's see what happens, whether my records will be really displayed or it will have some problem. Let us check that. Okay, so deployed. Let me start my postman. So sometime that postman is that takes time to start. Let me start it. Okay, and here what we can see, we don't want to send any parameter, nothing. So it will be just localhost 9001, and that's perfect. That's what we want right and let's see if i say send what happened what is coming to here yes something is displayed yes so i think uh, one thing i have done i have not displayed the payload over here you know so if you don't write payload here what it is printing it is printing the complete mule message okay so one of the uh, parameter is uh, payload out of that so let me do one thing let me just modify it and let me put payload which will print the outcome of select that's what let me select it once and let's it will redeploy quickly okay so that got redeployed now we will send the request once again so let me send the request so i'm sending the request now and let's see what happens okay so here you are printing the payload and what it is saying attempted to send invalid data through http response so basically whatever the output of this select that is iterator object you know which is like which contains all the records it's an array of objects okay and that java object might not be right response for the uh, final postman postman requires something string or some displayable data so the data which it can display so it looks that whatever response we are trying to send to the postman postman is not good with that so let us do one thing uh, let us set the payload and let us send that response from the postman so in our project we will add one set payload which will that payload will be actually displayed by postman so just have some string value which will be the response which can be uh, showable by postman so let us go to string mode and i say database records fetch successfully that i put so that will be displayed you know so now there will not be any problem let's save that let's wait till it get recompiled okay now i send the request again 
send and let's see what it shows yes now it is not exception or any error here you can see that my payload got printed by this logger so you will be surprised to see that it's not printing the records really so what it prints it is printing this one it is printing let me just copy and paste it in the notepad file so that i can explain you what it is printing copy this let me take it here it is printing this so what what is this basically this is the name of the java class very big so there is a package org package inside that org package there is mule package so till this point there are all packages are there and inside that final object package we do have this class the class name is managed cursor iterator provider so i told you that basically it creates the iterator java object this is what that iterator java object and what is this this is the memory address of that iterator java object Whenever you try to print the java object on the console using logger it will just print the hexadecimal address of that object that is called as hex address okay so this is hexadecimal address of that particular java object which is getting printed on the logger we don't have the uh, that that database records which are actually there that we cannot print here there is a way to print that we can have some for each kind of uh, scope so we will see that some other time there is something called as for each and using that for each i can print this content on the screen right now displaying it on the console that is not my objective i want to convert that into json so i wanted to have json basically after this so what i will do i will add my transform message as i told you i need to have transform message to convert my incoming database data into json form i really i'm not really interested to display that on the console we will see some other time maybe next time that uh, how to print it on the console but right now i want to convert that into json and for that i will require the component i will require the processor processor component interchangeably i'm using which will convert this iterator object into json format now what i do let me do one thing let me take that transform message which is a part of a core module that is fine let me take that after this logger maybe that logger is not printing anything great it is just printing the uh, hexadecimal address so let me remove that logger then i don't require this logger as well so whatever is the what select component will do it will put the database record in the iterator object form in payload so payload is holding that iterator object remember that and then i'll give that as an input to transform message now let me have a look on this transform message as i told you transform message has input schema that means uh, the format of input data and the format of output data that is what will be there in the transform message so let me show you what is the incoming format so incoming metadata automatically populated it is array of object which is stored in payload emp id ename and salary and salary is number ename is string emp id is number so depending on the output of the select it is automatically populating the input metadata in transform message we don't have to do anything in the input metadata so this will be input to my transform message now what about the output metadata this is output metadata you know input metadata is configured input format is configured but what is output metadata output format is not yet configured for that i require 
one sample json file i show you one uh, employee json file you will get an idea that how the sample json file is there so let me just have the extension of that file will be json i'll explain about the json format also don't worry so where is the json file yeah so these are all json file uh, emp this emp json file let me open that in notepad plus plus have a look on that so if i look at this uh, json file okay let me just okay that's fine so if I look at this JSON file, you can see the whole content is enclosed in square bracket. So square bracket indicates, let me copy this and let me take in notepad so that it will be visible for you clearly. So that is what my JSON sample file, have a look on that. So the whole content is stored in square bracket. So square bracket indicates array of elements. So it contains multiple elements basically okay because we are going to fetch multiple employee record so there will be multiple array of uh, multiple json elements will be there so that's an array okay array means it's a set so array is nothing but set then look at every element this is first json element this is second json element so every json element is enclosed in curly bracket so every json element or you can say record that is fine json record is enclosed in curly brackets that's what we observe then you can see every entry in the json record you can see this is one entry this is second entry and this is third entry so that is in form of key value pair this is called as key which is just a field name basically and this is the value of that so every json entry every json entry in json record is in form of in form of key value pair okay key value pair every json entry in json record is in form of key value pair so emp id is the key 100 is the value ename is the key uh, this bhakti is the value and so on that's how it is there then you can see one more thing every key is enclosed in double quotation doesn't matter whether it is numeric so emp id is numeric still that emp id is enclosed in double quotation so every key is in double quotation so every key is enclosed in double quotation okay and if you look at value so if the value is string let's say bhakti is string sumati is string revati is string so these all enclosed in double quotation but 100 that's a numeric value 10000 this is numeric value they are not enclosed in double quotation so every string value will be enclosed in will be enclosed in double quotation but for but numeric value should not be right so numeric value should not be enclosed in double quotation so these are some key things about json format and what i have done i have created this json file okay json sample file remember all json record they are separated with comma okay so all json records are separated with comma now what do you do you wanted to show multiple records you know 
So at least two records has to be there. Remember about this. This is very important. At least two records should be there. Should be there in JSON file. Okay, so what I do, I just shown you this ready-made JSON file. I'll create it from the scratch. Let me show you how to create it from the scratch. So I'll go to Notepad++. I close this file and I create new file. Okay, and I'm I'm typing that new file. So I just say op the square bracket, opening and closing square bracket. Then suppose I'm going to take two JSON record. So one, comma, and second. That's all. So two are sufficient to have in the sample file. Then in the uh, first record, I just put key. So double quotation, EMP ID. Then colon. So key and value are separated with colon. I forgot to mention that here. So key and value that are separated with colon. So key and value are separated with colon symbol. Okay, so let me take it. So if the font is very small, let me take it outside in the notepad and then I will put it in notepad plus plus that's fine okay so i just have emp id some dummy value for emp id let's say 100 then i put comma then the em name so let's say emp name this is not necessary same to your database fields database fields and this fields name can be different that is okay so this one then i do have colon and the value so value david complete comma then in double quotation i do have salary double quotation complete key and the any value as a salary you know any valid numeric value this is first record then I put comma here after that the second record again the same format will be there so I just copy this and I just paste it here and I just change the values maybe to indicate that it's a different record so David maybe Susan and salary is let's say 25k so this is what the format ready this is i will type in notepad plus plus so i paste it here it will be easy for me to save so i say file save as now while you save always put a double quotation around the file because this uh, extension is not matching with that so i just uh, save that file in the data folder that's fine and i put it in double quotation saying emp sample dot give the extension json so whatever this format is there save as type it is different you know that is the reason you are giving json as a different extension so put it in double quotation always that's a windows uh, os trick you can say emp sample dot json uh, sample one one maybe that file might be already exist so let me save that fine you can see color coding is in place so my json is valid then that's perfect so this sample file i have to use while configuring output metadata so i need to configure output format for that somehow i will require that json format so let me define the output metadata here let me go to define metadata and add so i want to create a metadata type firstly so i just say add and that is my json so i give the metadata type as json type you can give anything there but just keep it simple let us create the metadata type as json type create type so it's like you are creating the uh, custom data type you know just like integer uh, your string and your number and also you are creating the custom data type over here and you will define that using the sample file so you created a json type and here i want my type as the json 
so i say json and i want to configure this schema the format using example file that is what the sample file so i'll not select schema as of now i'll go to example so my sample file that is called as example file rather the the data sample is there so i go to example and i browse my example file which is inside g colon data and emp sample 11 that is what the file is there so i just select this i say open yes you can see now it has detected that format emp id number emp name string this is what you declared in your sample file if you remember okay this is what you declared in your sample file and i say select so it will populate the output metadata perfect so this contains this contains input metadata which is coming from the database and this contains output metadata which is nothing but in the json file as i told you this different element key name need not be same as the database field name so there is one difference you can say here it is e name and here it is emp name that is perfect now what i have to do you have to do the mapping so next is do the mapping so what i do this emp id i drag and put it inside emp id so this is called as mapping that means the incoming emp id one by one record emp id will be assigned to this emp id in the json and you can see automatically this code is generated over here this code is called as dwl code which is nothing but data weave language this is altogether a different language which is used for transformation so data weave language code get generated it automatically get generated so not to worry much about that okay then ename i just map it to emp name so you can see that that something some code got generated over here then salary salary will be stored over here okay after that my uh, dwl code got generated i don't have to touch that code really that's perfect let me save the project okay so this transform message what it will do it will take the database data and convert that into json format and that json format will be stored in log, uh, your payload so what i do i take one logger and i just take print that json on the uh, i just print the json on my uh, console now json format very well can be understood by postman remember that so your json json format you can send to postman without any problem it will not give you error like database records previously we got the error so what i do whatever json format i do have i will send that to my uh, postman so i i remove this set payload i don't want to set any value for the response whatever is the current value of payload that will be sent which is json format to postman postman very well understand json format it will not give any error rest assured about that let me just still the generation of file is remaining actually generation of json file is remaining still let me save this and let me see if i can see the json format displayed on the console okay i just saved that so it will be uh, redeployed so yes it got redeployed let me send 
the request from postman send the request and let us check perfect again that logger uh, we missed to give the payload you know so let me give payload no problem save it okay then let us send the request send and wow so you can see that whenever i printed this pre, uh, payload with the logger you can see my json got generated so these are actual records from the database so my complete json got generated and as i told you json format you can very well send to postman so postman in the response this is the response so response of the postman is json format okay so my postman actually got the json format as the response what your project is doing it is picking up the records from the database transform message is converting that into the json format and that is getting printed on the console now one thing left which is generating the output so maybe let me have write file so write from the file module and let me take that write which will actually or generate the file so let me see that okay so file path uh, as per our requirement that emp.json has to be generated in g colon output you know that's what is the requirement so what i do uh, g colon data output this folder path i'll give okay i'll give this path here path okay and i'll have the file name file name will be emp json okay emp dot json that will be the file name right now what your output contains let's see it contains some billing file anyway you can just delete it if you want and here this will be generating the payload that's great and let me save it it will redeploy this time file will be also generated so it the the output will be displayed in the uh, console and in the postman as well as the output file will be generated what is that i think so let me stop this once and let me redeploy it again clean that it's already saved let me run that so hopefully this time uh, running from the scratch will help we'll wait till it's get deployed okay it got deployed let me send a request from this anyway this is old response let me send the new request so it is washing out the response so not to worry about that okay and here what i can see is yes i think uh, i got the all uh, records in json form that got displayed 
okay so all record in json form that got displayed postman also got the json record that is per working perfectly fine just to check the emp.json which is created. let me open it in notepad edit with notepad plus plus and that will be open over here you can see that it is generating this emp.json file actually so that is how we can implement db to json scenario right end to end we have seen and patiently uh, you just uh, understood that so this is how we implemented this complete db to json scenario so in case if you have any question anywhere uh, anything you have not understood uh, feel free to ask anything you want to see again whatever i configured i wanted to show that in an end-to-end -end manner not wanted to really break it in pieces in multiple session that is the reason completely i shown you the uh, whole set of configurations so that if i give you any activity you will able to do that let me do one thing now let me assign you one activity which you can similarly do at your end this is the activity so what do you have to do you have to create the student table in the database instance just like here i do have employee you have to create student table in this okay and the fields in that will be roll number student name and marks you have to insert five records in student table and then write the mule app which will fetch all student records and generate student.json file out of that right so again we know that the way we created employee json over here sample json same way you have to create student sample json as well 